friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card for you using Lawn Fawn's Christmas Fishes and Mermaid for You. I'm going to be doing a Christmas in July card. So I've stamped all the images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my mermaid skin and I'm using E000, E00, and E11. A little E11 for the shadows up under her hairline and on the undersides of her arms and on her belly. And then blending that out with the E00 and then using the E000. And then I'm going to also use those shades to color in the little conch shell down at the bottom. So just um, using the darker colors down at the bottom and then leaving a highlight at the top. And then I'm going to move on to my mermaid's rosy cheeks and I'll do those with R11 and R20. And then for her hair, I wanted it to be a red head, but I didn't want to go like a pure red or a orange. I wanted her to look like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. So I decided to do a combination of YR and R markers. So I chose YR04, YR07, and R17. And I'm starting with the YR04 and kind of mapping out where I want my darkest places to be. Normally I color darkest to lightest. With hair, I do it in the reverse. I start with my lightest shades and work my way toward the dark and then work back down toward the light. And that is just because it's a lot easier to build up your color than it is to take it away. And I tend to be someone who colors a bit heavy handed with my darker shades. And with hair, if it's too dark, you don't get to see the different highlights and things. So uh, that's why I do it this way. So if I were coloring a regular redhead on a person, I would probably use a little bit more of brown toned or muted orange, oranges like the YR12, YR14, YR16, YR18, something in there. And I would probably also add a touch of brown in the mix. But I wanted her to look like Ariel, like I said, and Ariel's hair is pretty bright red. But I knew there was going to be a lot of other reds from just the traditional Christmas colors. And I didn't want her red hair to be the same tone. I wanted it to stand out. So that's why I went a little more orange for that. Um, so now I'm just going back in and adding a few extra flicks with the R17 and the YR07 right through the center of those highlights to add in some low lights and pull the whole thing together. And then I also decided to do the crab in these shades just to have him stand out a little bit more from his hat as well. Um, I thought he would be like Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, so I didn't want to do him in a different color, and yet I didn't want him also to be the exact same shade as his Santa hat and just have everything be one tone. So that's why I decided to do him in this combo as well. And then it gives me one other place on the card where I have this color palette here. So I'm just going to continue coloring him in and filling in his little claws with the YR04 to finish him off. And then I wanted to do her little bikini top and I decided to go with B66, B69, and B79. On my Copic color chart, these looked a little bit more purple. I need to color a new color chart. Mine is very old and it's probably kind of gotten faded from the sun after years of sitting on my desk. So the colors aren't quite true, I don't think anymore. So. Anyway, I wanted to tone that a little bit more towards the purple, so I added in V12 and colored that in. It didn't blend great, but it did push some of the blue toward the outside edges. So it did uh, kind of give me the purple tone that I wanted, but I decided to go over the blue with the V15 and V17. So together it gave me kind of like an indigo combo. 
So I am also going to use those purple shades on the little seahorse. I put the V17 down the back and in the curve of the tail on the underside of the cheek area. And then I'm blending forward with the V15 and filling in with the V12. Then I'll keep the V12 and add in the V000 and V01. I use the V01 for the fins down the seahorse's back, and then I'm using all three of those shades for the clamshells. I have one that's over on the right by the rocks, and then all the rest are on this kelp Christmas tree. So I'm just gonna color those with the V12 down at the bottom, and then blending up with the V01 and adding a little V000 to the very tips. Next, I'm going to use some greens. I'm using G05, G03, and G02. And I still have the G05 in Chow style. When I originally bought Copics, I bought 12 in the Chows and then quickly switched to the sketch markers, which I much prefer. But anyway, my G05 is still one of the original Chows. So I'm using those three shades for Ariel's tail. Just added the shading on the left hand side and the highlight on the right. And I did go back and add a little bit extra depth there with a second layer, um, just on the darkest two shades. Then I'm going to switch to some different greens, but still keep in the cool greens. So I used G14, G16, G19, and G29 for my kelp Christmas tree, starting with the G29 and kind of picking different parts of the stems to add that darkest shade to where another one overlaps in front of it typically. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the G19, just pulling that color a little bit further up each of those little stems, I guess you would call them stems, stems of grass. So uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna continue coloring up toward the top, filling that in. And uh, I ended up not using the G16, or at least not very much. I added a touch of it right there, and I couldn't really tell the difference between that and the G19. So I just decided to leave it off and skipped straight to the G14 everywhere else. So that's what I'm gonna use for my highlight. And I'm just gonna make sure that I'm going over the edge of that G19 first to kind of break up the edge of that color and pull it into this lighter shade. And then I'll continue coloring up that stem of the kelp. So I'm just gonna work my way all the way up this Christmas tree and fill everything in so it's nice and green and a nice Christmas traditional shade. And then I'm also going to do the little extra kelps that are off to the side there with the same combos. So I just started with my G29 again, then went to the G19 and skipped straight to the G14 to fill in the top. And I'll switch up my greens again for this other little vine. I'm gonna use G43 and G46 for that. The leaves are pretty small, so I'm just using the two shades, a little G46 toward the stem and then the G43 toward the outer edges. And then I thought these little bulbs on the Christmas tree kind of looked like they were the leaves of that plant. So I decided to color those in with the same tones in exactly the same way. And then I'm going to switch to some grays. I'm going to use W1, W3, W5, and W7 to color in all of these rocks. And I wanted them to look you know, kind of variegated and not completely all one tone. So I'm going in with that W7 first and adding a few streaks of that darkest shade here and there, just kind of giving it some texture. And then I'll come in with the W5 and add a few more here and there, just kind of pulling that darkest shade into the next one, but they don't have to be completely blended. It's okay if there's a little bit of, uh, you know, roughness there because it's stone. 
So I'm going to fill in with the W3 for the rocks. That's going to be my lightest. And then I'm going to use the W3 and the W1 for this little clamshell that is a gift. So just adding that in there. And then I did decide to add the W00 as well, just to give it a bit more highlight on those top ridges. And I used the W00 on the pearl tiara. And then I'm also going to do the white parts of the Santa hats with the W1 and then the W00 to just blend that into the white. Next I'm going to do my traditional Christmas red. I'm using R24, R29, and R39. And like I mentioned, I'm going to do the Santa hats. I'm using the R39 down at the bottom of each of those, kind of right above the brim where that would be folded up and casting a shadow. And then blending that out with the R29 and then I can fill everything else in with the R24. And now you can see what I mean about that Christmas hat still being able to stand out on the crab and not look like it's the same exact color. So I'm going to finish with the last Christmas hat and then I also wanted to do the gift bows on the little present and also the clamshell in red. So again, just putting that R39 down at the bottom, blending up with the R29 and then using the R24 for the highlight at the top. And then for the fish, I wanted those to be yellow. So I'm going to use Y13, Y15, and Y17. So this is kind of a nod to flounder, but I know they don't look like flounder from The Little Mermaid. I would need to add some blue details, but they're not really the right shape exactly either. So I didn't want to try to mess with it and kind of risk, you know, kind of messing it up after all of this coloring. So I just went with yellow on both of these guys and... Um, yeah, I think it'll still look nice and cheerful on the Christmas card. And then I did the little gift wrap in this yellow combo as well, just to have that in one other place on the card. And then my final combo is going back to YR04 and YR07, but this time I'm adding in YR09 and I'm going to do the two starfish, the one on top of the Christmas tree and the one that is separate. So that'll just kind of pull all of those other red and orange combos together. So I will take a black Sakura jelly roll pen and go over the open eye of my crab and my two fish. And by the way, that crab comes with multiple faces. You can stamp different ones in there. I just decided to go with the winky one because I thought it was really cute. Oh, and also the eye of my seahorse. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and cut it down with the stitched ripple backdrop, and then also die cut it with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables to give it a little bit of a frame and make it a little bit smaller. And then I used one of the simple stitch hillside borders on a separate piece for the ground. So I'm going to start with the ocean and I'm going to blend on some Cracked Pistachio Distress Oxide ink. This is going to be the color at the bottom of my scene. So I'm taking it up pretty far on this panel because I know that the sandy bottom is going to cover up most of what I've done here with this shade and I still want some of it to show. So that's why I took it up so far. Next I'm going to bring in some Lucky Clover and I'm going to make sure that I overlap a little bit of that cracked pistachio and then bring that up further on the card. And then I'm going to go back to the previous ink blending tool and go over that transition area to kind of help smooth that out. Now these colors are pretty far apart on the, you know, the color palette that uh, Lucky Clover is quite a bit darker than the cracked pistachio. So I do have to work a little bit back and forth to get them to blend but it did blend just fine in the end. And then I will add some pine needles up at the top and bring that down to overlap some of the Lucky Clover. And you could also do this background in blue tones if you prefer. I just thought the green would be nice for Christmas, so that's why I went with it. 
just wanted to do something different. So I did go back and blend over that transition area a couple more times to make sure everything was nice and smooth. And then I'm going to add some ink splatter. I'm only using those darkest and lightest shades. So it's the cracked pistachio and the pine needles. I really like how the lighter Distress Oxide adds a really unique look to the darker inks. And then of course the darker ink looks really nice on the lighter ink. So that's why I went with those two. I didn't bother adding in the Lucky Clover as well because it's just a little bit here and there. And I thought that the other two shades would, you know, add enough detail in that background. So I'm going to do more to that in just a minute. But first I am going to clean up my... Uh, mini media mat and then go on to the sand. So for the sand, I'm starting with antique linen and I'm going to put that up at the top, making sure to blend that on pretty heavily up where the stitching detail is. So it gives me a nice uh, bit of definition there. And then I'll bring in gathered twigs for the bottom area and I'll bring that up to overlap the antique linen. And then of course, go back and work over that transition area once again. And then I'm going to do some splatter detail on this one as well. So I'll use both of those shades once again, just pressing them onto the block, adding a bit of water, and then picking them up with the paintbrush and adding that bit of texture that's gonna get, make it look like little grains of sand. So once I have those two panels done, I also wanted to add in some sparkle with this gold paint. So I'm using my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. I mixed up a pretty gold shade and I'm gonna tap that all over both pieces. I thought it would look really pretty on both parts of that background. So once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm going to set these two pieces off to the side to dry and I'm gonna work on my sentiment got a little scrap of white cardstock in there and I'm stamping Seasons Greetings in lobster ink and I will stamp that down twice to make sure it's nice and bold and then I'm going to do an insert for the inside of my card so I cut down a piece of white cardstock with the same outside in stitch rectangle stackables and I'm going to do We Fish You a Merry Christmas and then those two fish again with a little trio of bubbles. So now I'm ready to start assembling everything. I've made a card base out of some barn red cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and I've scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card. I'm gonna glue the insert to the inside of that, which gives me that nice red border. Then I'm going to add the stitch ripple backdrop to the front of my card. And I know those ripples are probably intended to run the other way, but I really wanted to make a tall card so I decided it was fine, you know, the ripples can go different ways and it kind of matches the curvy style of the kelp and the kelp Christmas tree. So I just decided to go with it. I forgot to trim down the sandy bottom, but I decided I actually liked the way that looked, so I just left it. So I just have the red border around the top and the two sides. And now I'm ready to start adhering my images. So I'm gonna start with the kelp Christmas tree and I'm gonna add that toward the top of that sandbar toward the right-hand side a little bit. And then to balance that out, I'm gonna have the big rock over on the left and I'll have Ariel sitting on top of that. So just add her right over the edge of that, adjust my Christmas tree a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna add Sebastian the crab down toward the bottom. So they kind of make a little triangle if you can see that which is pleasing to the eye in design. Then I'm gonna add one of the other little rocks there, just kind of anchoring that Christmas tree and some kelp nearby. So I'm gonna tuck one of these other little kelps behind that, just kind of peel up the edge and tuck that behind. So that it looks like, you know, that Christmas tree is kind of growing naturally there in the sandbar because there's other little bits and pieces growing nearby as well. I have that clamshell gift that I want to add near the tree, but I haven't settled exactly on where I wanted it to go yet, so I just left it there, not adhered. But I added the little vine over near the large rock and one of the, uh, the other starfish attached to the rock. 
And then I've got another little rock cluster that I'm going to put down toward the middle bottom of the card. And I decided to commit to that clamshell, so I'm going to glue that down right beneath the Christmas tree there. And then I've got uh, another little kelp that I wanted to add behind this other little rocky outcropping. So I'm just going to pick up that rock before that's a glued down completely and adhere that little kelp behind it. And then I'll add that rock right back over top. Before I add anything to the top part of the card, I want to make sure that I have room for my sentiment. So I'm going to glue that down next. I've trimmed that down with one of the everyday sentiment banners and I'm going to put that up at the top right of the card, adhere that down and then just trim off the excess there. So that also is going to run off into that red border just like the sandy bottom. And then I'm going to add one of the yellow fish swimming in from the left, kind of towards that sentiment. And then right below that, I'm going to add the seahorse. And then over on the right, I'm going to add the other yellow fish, kind of filling in that blank space there. I'm going to put the yellow gift inside Ariel's hand. And then I have the little seashell that I'm going to put in Sebastian's claw. So it looks like he's decorating that Christmas tree with those shells. I'll add the cock shell down at the bottom left to fill in that blank space. And then I'm going to give Ariel the little pearl tiara. So everybody has their little Christmas outfits on. She's got a tiara and the rest of them have Santa hats. So I wanted to add even more detail into this background, so I took a few of the bubble images and I'm going to stamp that all over the background in some Lawn Fawn Noble Fur ink. So on one side of this little block I have a trio of bubbles and then I have a small single bubble that I'm going to also use just stamping here and there to kind of make it look all cohesive. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to just add a little bit of sparkle to finish things off. So putting a little bit of stardust stickles on the white parts of the Santa hat. I'm also going to add it to the starfish and the pearl tiara and the little uh, gift bows on the gift and the clamshell. And then I decided to keep going and add it to all of the little seashells as well. And of course, every mermaid tail should sparkle. So I'm going to add a little bit over on the left hand side of her tail and on her little bikini top as well. So this one definitely brings the sparkle, but I think it's appropriate for a mermaid card. So going to lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and how that catches the light between the stickles and that gold speckle uh, watercolor. Um, there's lots of glitter there. So there's another peek at the inside and I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything listed and linked for you down below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me. I so appreciate it. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.